look at it and go, do you like it or do you don't like it or do you want to learn it? Uh, but it, hair dressing is fine. Right, so my first guy is going to be, because she's already short, is on her crown. So I'm going to start cutting a guide and using my tapering scissors. Now I use tapering scissors like a straight scissor, not like, uh, not like a, a, a tapering scissor where you go in and thin the hair out. I'm virtually blunt cutting with this. And I'll combine straight scissors and tapering scissors and razor wherever I feel I need to move that, that uh, weight around. So the goal with this haircut is to be short to long, short on the sides, short on the back, really clean, but the energy will all be in here. So this is going to be a guide. So I'm going to commit myself to super, you know, short on the crown, make sure I get short enough. The biggest mistake people make when they cut short hair is they become afraid. And so they don't commit to certain length of so, okay, back to the crown. So I want to eliminate this hair. So I'm cutting the hair toward the length that I want. And as you see, I'm gradually getting longer as I go out. doesn't mean you can't experiment and, and you know get those doll heads and start cutting them up and take pictures you know go on the internet and pull up pictures of haircuts and copy a picture be copycats that's how I really learned was being the best copycat who's the one about haircuts that I like and I would copy them because as a, a young hairdresser at the time I, I didn't really trust myself as far as being super creative so I would take someone else's art and try to copy it, you know, whether it's Sassoon at the time or whoever, and start cutting hair that way. Now people will tell you root direction is really important. Uh, I find what's important to me is where, where I'm working on the ends. Now I'm going to jump I have my line in here, so we're going to take this part away and start cutting into the sides. Now we know, we established we're going to cut these sides off. <coughs> so we need to go in and not start here, we need to go right to it. Go right to it, right where it starts. Right where the shortest point is. A double baseline is where, this is your baseline here, right? Your baseline is always the fringe of the hair, where it starts, the bottom part. So but a double baseline means I have two baselines. So I have a baseline here, but now well, we're going to have a double baseline on the other side because the hair is All right, so we have our baseline. Already I'm getting a cool thing happening. See, so that's like getting my heartbeat up like, oh, this is really cool, you know. And hopefully everybody around me is going, oh, he's really good. <laughs> okay, now, your occipital bone is right here. So this is where you create your second baseline. So I might just go in and cut a line. It starts giving me this weight line that starts moving across. So I'm going to start seeing this weight line move across the head. See with me though, I don't really like the section here off like with the clips and stuff because I like to see, I like to see what's happening as, a, you know, as it's happening. 
Sometimes when you section them, I know in school you need to become a, a, a technician sort of before you become an artist, really. You need to learn the technical part of cutting hair and understand what you're doing. So while you're cutting hair, ask yourself, why am I doing it? So it's really important that, that, that you know why. It's going to be working into here. So I want to see that happen. Now I want to get this clear. So we're going to do some scissor over combing with the tapering scissors. Now what I like about the tapering scissors is the scissor over comb. It doesn't leave any lines and it's very forgiving and gets it very close. Now let's do something crazy with the neck a little bit. Start creating a really cool neck. You know? So I'm going to go back to this guideline. Remember that first guideline? And we're going to start cutting around the head. And I cut radially. And the radial means using the roundness of the head. Not so much vertically and horizontal, but I like to use it around the head. So I can see, I can see what I'm doing. Now I can also cut the other one. The straight scissors, vertical, horizontal, 90. 45 degree angles because it's important to be know every way because you don't want to ever get bored doing it. So the next day I might go to work and say, I'm not doing these paper things at all. I'm going to do them strictly as soon as I can. And I use the words as soon as I because I'm a huge admirer of, of their finished work. I've got a lot of friends in the UK, uh, always on their Facebook. And you can Facebook us, and we always show you cool haircuts. And I get inspired by looking at the work. It, it, it turns me on as a hairdresser. That's what you need to be, is turned on as a hairdresser. Now we're going to leave this long, so I'm directing it, and I'm staying long, working it long. So you can see how this line is all falling in. Mm -hmm.
Now, it's interesting, I've been doing here like 20 minutes, and I have almost all the hair cut done. Uh, so it shows like if you know where you're going and you can quickly get there. Now, I'm not saying ever to rush through your haircuts or do any of that, but I find for me personally, when I cut and get there quicker, I can see the vision quicker. Sometimes I find if I'm like lingering, I sort of forget where the vision was. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't want to get too advanced because you know, I know you guys are students, I'm used to teaching you know, seasoned hairdressers who already can cut this stuff. But for you, it's to learn technique, find out which technique you like, put a book together of cool haircuts, and this is, you know, and learn them. Okay, so now we have to eliminate this hair the same way I did the other hair. Then the haircut really takes shape. So again, I use the same technique. Pulling a large section up toward my second baseline. I find today a lot of uh, students who come out of school have a difficult time cutting short hair. There's been so much emphasis on extensions and using irons and they're sort of getting away from the interesting haircuts like this. Look at how beautiful that looks. This is a really simple, clean. And now I go to my second baseline. Carving it around your ear. In today's world, it's, it's, it's difficult to find clients who want this. You know what I mean? It's more, you know, I'll find girls on the street, and I'll, you know, turn, you know, I'll turn, I'll turn a good model, and I'll be free. But I've, but I've gone into malls and seen hot girls and, and you know, told them to come in for free haircuts because I want to do them. I mean, I, I want to. They are going to let me do that work. It sounds so long. <laughs> it's changed so much. You know, my days was like, I want that today, I want to do that. I'm going to text him. Sex talk. <laughs> if you see girls that you know have kind of cool haircuts, those are the ones. You're not going to find some girl with super long hair and I say, would you like this? Uh, She'd think I'm nuts. But if I go to a girl who's already got something close to it, then she will like it. You see, I say there's a short hair class. I don't mean go find, you know, soccer mom with hair down to here and say I'm going to give you a geometric haircut. You got to go where these girls are, and it's usually the bars. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Here, stand up. Uh, long. Well, this is actually I just clean, and then I give like really long layers. In, in front, I should basically clean the whole cut. I don't cut it. I cut it. The major cut is in the back. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, you're, you, when you leave beauty school, your, your goal is to be a great hairdresser and to please people. You know, so you need to become a great salesperson about your art. You know, it's like a woman comes in and she says, well, I want you to leave it long and just trim the front. That's not good enough. Okay, this is what you want. Well, here's what I want for you. Just shake your head a little bit and show her how the hair cut moves. And it's it's gorgeous. You can, you can cut her for me. Okay. Whatever you want. Okay. She's your client. You, you okay. talk to her. Okay. Pretend you're clients. Someone go, hey dude, the eyes are really messed up. <laughs> you know, right? 
what's with the eyeballs? One's here, one's there. It's like, that's the, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. So. so I'm breaking into the occipital bone area to get it. That line, because I don't want it to be like buzz and a big bump. That's very easy. That's kind of not happening right now. So we want to see is a more textury feeling going on back here. So I'm using my hands when I'm cutting hair. You see, I'm, 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 I'm working the head. That's what I do. I like to work the hair. It's not where I, it's like I want to look at her. You know, she's she's my piece of art. It's like painting. You step back and you look and you think and you do this. So some people could do this. Some people can't. I mean, some people become fabulous technicians. But it's section by section by section. So I try to reach the people that want to be more touching into the art side of it, to, you know, have fun with it like that. What about? Answer it. How would you do a design like this on fine hair? I would do it the same way. Fine hair, actually, fine hair looks thicker when it's like this. Because it thickens itself up, it bolts itself up. The one thing I wouldn't do on super fine hair is over layer. Okay, should we leave this real long like this? Do we like this, or should like we cut it. into it? I like it. What do you guys think? What do you think? Yeah. See a little bit. See, 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 see that again? No. I want to see your face up and nothing. That's the one thing I like. No, I kind of like it, but I understand where you're coming from. But. To keep our relationship good, she wants a long time. <laughs> if I want to cut it off, make you happy, make her unhappy, then I'm going to lose the client. Right. Yeah. And, then, and then she'll be unhappy and cry and talk and about me on dead. Facebook, go on Yelp, tell me what a jerk I am. <laughs> I know what's going on today. This whole Yelp thing is a killer. God, I've had so many people. Never about my haircut stuff. It's always about... So in beauty school one time, I got mad and I threw my little beauty school case against the wall. Okay. I'm following, keeping her length, right? So you're going from long to short. I mean, I'm sorry, from short to long. Don't just go short and then disconnect and be totally long. For me, I don't really love it. I like it when it follows each other and uh, See how cute this is? It really works with the shape of her face. It works. Uh, she's very happy because I have it. And I, and I like this look. I do. I love it. It goes really good teamwork here. Clean it up with my straight scissors. a little bit, put a little more texture in the crown. And also the reason I'm here is I have a new product line called Sheer Force and uh, it was designed for hairdressers to create fun, funky yeah. hair. I don't know if you've seen it, we have a product called Texture String that I'll show you a little bit. That's really cool and it gives you some really bizarre textures. And uh, this is so cool. So no matter what she does, see the balance. See, to me it's all about balance. And I feel this is extremely balanced. Her skin. Now I'm going to blow her dry, like really fast, with my fingers. So the one thing you don't want to do is start picking up a brush with hair like this. All right. So when you start blowing hair dry, I want you to start working with your fingers. This is now the reason I'm starting on this side, going this way, because what am I doing when I'm drying this hair? 
Yeah. This is the underneath here, right? So then this here is going to come above it and go this way. So I want to get the moisture out here first. And let your haircut do its job. Don't start doing things with your hand that's going to take it out of the haircut. So let the haircut be there. Stay focused when you blow dry. Get it dry as you're moving it. So if you go this way and you blow the, the base the wrong way, this will lift up. We don't want to stay close to the head. If you use a razor to clean your neck, you go down. When I was in years ago, we used to do weaving. I mean, this blonde lady's hair. And the last cook, I hooked a mole. A drop of blood hooked in the, the plastic bag and spread all over her head. It was just like I hit like a gusher of blood. <laughs> I am not reweaving this. Understand? to see the balance, how the, the, the heavy side works with the white side. Do you, do you guys like it? Mm -hmm. This is called texture string. This is a product I invented uh, to get here a little funkier. What's really cool to the hair and create texture. Wow. 
So it, what it does, it changes the shape. So you put your hands in there and you can get that hair to really piece it up like that. And, you know, develop really cool texture in the hair. This even made her color look so much cooler. Yeah. I love the color you guys did. did who uh, did this on you guys? It's great. You get to wear this uh, rest of your life here. Okay, this is, you know, what I love about it, it's really straight. And it doesn't, you know, this could be, I can take this whole front and layer, cut this across this way too. See, so it has really long in the front, but more of a super long bang. Nothing on this side. <coughs> this is definitely an asymmetric short. Sure really okay, there you go. Let's do something real quick. I promised her. Uh, you see, I'm going to cut like an A line haircut on here with a, with a, with a razor. Which, which is sort of unusual. And uh, it will be kind of fun. We only have a few minutes, so. So you want it long, like like here long? Now the color is kind of interesting. Uh, I don't, this has nothing to do with my line or anything, but um, it's a color called magma that well makes, and it's the only color that that lifts hair, lifts dyed hair without bleach. So it's something to check into. Wallace sells it. It's called magma. Got a strange name, but what's great is usually if you dye here in dark, I dyed her, her and I dyed it like a level two or three like that. And then she wanted red highlights. I would have to bleach that hair and then put red right into it. But the magma, you don't have to do it. It just comes out red. It comes out this hot, too. It comes out. Especially if the hair has been like bleached and it's like kind of funky. So, okay, stand up. Again, the energy is on the ends of the hair, where I want it to be, Hortensi is uh, one of our head teachers at the, at the salon. She teaches everything from cutting and coloring. You said you wanted to be asymmetrical. What is asymmetrical? No, it's uh, asymmetrical. Is one side. So brave! What happened to you? <laughs> Never mind. I'm just doing it. <laughs> I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> So 
See, the, the razor and the tapering scissors are used like straight scissors. They aren't used like the old days where we would go in and shred the hair out. They're used on a blunt level to create the line. But it's much more of a textured line on the bottom than me cutting it very straight. Now what I'm going to do in the back is create a slight layer, a slight double on the bottom up. So I use the scissors and release that weight. serum is a silicone based serum that creates shine and makes the hair slippery. Yeah. Focus on the piece you're blowing. Your hair going in right away with a brush to create as much shine and texture as possible. My fingers are letting it get frizzy, slowly so different than the other head. Is, you know, you've got a haircut like this, it's so important, and you 
squeezing the head and brushing it, you're blowing almost half of the head dry and taking pieces. Certainly moving really faster than I'll be cutting this long. But she looks so different, just you know, cutting that little bit of and I left her long and it's long enough for her, she doesn't feel like she's been But you know, like showing you, I mean, I, I, you know, showing you really what it's like to make women beautiful in the salon, this is what it's about. I mean, this is, but this is the level of work I want you to do. And I want you to, to, to sacrifice doing the work you don't want to do. 
you know? I mean, no more setting, no more teasing, unless you're setting to do something, period, like a 50s look or a period look. But, you know, don't become a slave to your client by whatever, yes ma'am, hairdresser, whatever you want. You know, what do you want? You no, know, this is what I think you should have. This is what you do. What, what, well, I don't really like, it goes as far as this little here stand up for me. Just, damn, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, just the, 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 the slight longer side. Not, you know, this would be, I could cut this. But, but see, even if I was going to cut it to here, this, this would be the here. So it's getting longer, 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 longer. Not where it gets longer here. See, that's what drives me crazy. Asymmetrical doesn't mean like nothing here and four pounds of hair over here. It's the same, it's just soft. It's like, you know, it has that kind of thing. And you know, and I go to hair shows and I see, you know, people go up there and they do, you know, just like buzz this side off and this side, this side. It's cool for a show, but it's a little unrealistic to me. I like to be a little more realistic of what, what's made me sort of who I am today was making women look beautiful. But also not losing my integrity of what I like cutting. It's always been important to me. It's like I've done a lot of movie stars, but I've never like even talking about it because to me it was not who I do. It was always what I did on. If I could change them, it was important. Anybody you had to go go join a, a, a you could join a, a place today. They'll send you out. You can do all the movie stars you want. And all these people have this long list. But what did you do on them? Did you cut them? Did you change them? Did you change the color? Or did you just blow them out for for a shoot or for for a TV show? You know, and there's a lot of great hairdressers, a lot of great hairdressers today that have changed these celebrities, but the celebrities, you know, like keep it, keep it quiet. You can talk about all the men I sleep with and all these other things, but don't talk about who cut my goddamn hair. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, that's the part that drove me nuts. And for years, especially my, you know, during the 80s, I cut everybody. You know, all, all the TV stars, you know, all the way to, to Anne Bancroft and, 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 and Diane Keaton, Dustin Hoffman, and all these people. And I'm going to put it in the press. They're going to know. People are going to know. I did this. I'm not going to be like, shh, quiet. You know what I mean? You walk in down there with someone, you're going to get written about. It. Then don't walk in. Because it's not, you make more money by making you look beautiful. Some of get, I get some benefit from this. And that's, and then nobody, they never want to pay you anything. Never. They're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're sweet, but they, they're, they have a thing about paying people. You see that little cut I did in there, how cool that looks? Yeah. Just that, that cut, that little bang. Just that little break in there. Let me see if I can get you halfway even there. Okay, so we have some pieces we have to go through here. So this is chipping. It releases weight, opens it up. Just know why you're doing it. That's the end. So when I layer here, it's a, like a double. I don't want to layer this into a layer where it's like a shag. And once you layer past the occipital bone, we all know where that is now because I told you. Then it becomes a layered haircut. But this is not a layered haircut, it's a one length haircut with a slight bevel to it. It needs movement. So all I'm doing is cutting that top hair. Doesn't mean I have to cut every single hair on her head when I do this. Do you like it or you don't like it or do you want to learn it? Uh, but it, hairdressing is fun.